Well, good morning, Center Bethel. Are you ready to worship this morning? Are you ready to worship this morning? Okay, all right. Hey, there are a few housekeeping items that we have to um, take care of this morning before we start our worship service. For the last two weeks, we announced that we're going to have a congregational meeting this morning, a special one. Um, there's two things on the agenda, okay? The first thing on the agenda is the Constitution. Um, by now, most of you or all of you have had some bedtime reading um, to put you to sleep at nighttime, okay? Um, but um, we're going we're gonna to vote on this, but just let me share, there's, just, there's a few changes in this. A lot of it's grammar changes, okay? Um, we did strengthen our position on marriage between a man and a woman, um, so it's strengthened a little more. And then we'll tell you, the General Conference is going to come out with a statement here. Um, they're working at it, on it now, so they are about everything that the church is facing in the future, okay? One of the other things I just want to share with you that we have changed is you'll notice if you, if you looked at this, and some of you have asked this, that's why I'm going to tell you, okay, some of you have asked this. In the Article 1 membership, okay, there was a, there was a phrase in there um, about existing members, okay, and they, I want to read it all, I'll read it some to you. It says, all persons, former members of the Center of the Church of God and those um, in accordance with the following section, section of this article, okay, membership in that, okay. What was, so many people had some questions, what's that mean? My answer was, I don't know. And I looked in other constitutions, and it's in there too. So I talked to a constitution scholar, Jason and I did, and this is what it means. It means that the way it's stated, and we thought maybe down the road we could have, no one's ever brought up some problems about just switching membership and that. It has nothing to do with that. What that means, that we were incorporated in 1985, okay? So anyone who was members before 1985 we were incorporated were automatically grandfathered in. That's all it means. So in the, on the bottom we, we put in, including those who joined the Center of the Church of God prior prior to the church incorporation in 1985. It just grandfathered them. That's all it means. Okay? So if you, if you read that before and you've had a problem with that, um, you can't understand that. I didn't understand it either. Okay? It's in a lot of constitutions, but that's just for people who were members of Center Bethel before we were incorporated. Okay? They were just transferred over. Okay? Um, it's, a, it's a legal thing. All right? So this, um, the other things you can read, you can look at, um, I got two copies. Well, everybody should have two copies of the Constitution. You should. Um, so what we want to do, I want to I want to raise a, 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 a motion, a second. Then if you have any questions, we'll take questions. Jason and I will take questions for you. Do I have a motion to approve the Constitution? Bob Baker, second, Marvin Brandhoover. Okay. Are there any questions about the Constitution? Go ahead. No, those are members. Members of church. Okay. No, not the, not the him. No, 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 no. Reasonable, taller people. <laughs> taller people. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? You can raise your hand, though, if you want to. I can. Any other questions? All in favor of approving the Constitution with Senator Bethel, say aye. aye. All opposed? Okay. The second thing that we're going to be voting on, Bobby and, and Ed, right there's the ballots, um, is to confirm um, Jason as the next pastor of, of Senator Bethel. You guys can get them out of it, okay? Um, so what it is, it's very, it's very basic. As they, as they pass out, I'll read it to you. And it says this, and you've seen it probably. It says, during the fourth quarter of 2023, Pastor Lee advised the church that he planned on to retire at the end of April 2024. The fact that we have had an associate pastor, associate pastor Jason Kramer, for several months, it is recommendation <laughs> for the ad, um, from, of the Ad Council that we extend the offer to Jason to succeed Pastor Lee. Jason um, has mentored at Center Bethel before serving as an elder for many years and also with Pastor Lee as our uh, pa associate pastor. As an educator for over a quarter century, and he's old, 
a quarter century. He needs three more years of the position, therefore, uh, and he will serve as a bivocational pastor during this, that period. Um, Jason has an annual license now. He's on track to receive life ordination this May at the ARC conference. His starting date will be May 5th, 2024. Okay? So it says today we're asking if you agree with the council and offer the pastoral position to Jason Kramer. So all that we need you to do is to vote yes or no. Okay? Then once you vote, pass the, pass the ballots over to the, the center aisle. And Bobby and Ed will be um, tallying them up and everything. We'll, we'll close the meeting at the end of the, the worship service, okay? So after you vote, just pass them over to the center. Jason wants to know if there's any questions. <laughs> if, you, if you have a question, you know, just ask. I guess not. Okay. Yeah. Oh, is that what you said about me? Hope for the best. No, I'm just I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> I know. That's a thank you for saying that. That's nice. That's nice for them to hear, too. Anyone else have something to say? Huh? You're hoping for the best. <laughs> uh, you don't know, he doesn't know this, but after you vote, you vote yes, he has to run the gauntlet. <laughs> okay, there's several things he hasn't learned yet. He don't know about yet, which we're, in the next two months he'll probably learn. No, he will. All the ballots in? Okay. Oh, Michelle has one back there, too. Okay. All right, that's enough of that business. Let's worship God this morning. Go ahead, Jason. Well, good morning, church. Good morning, kingdom of God. I'm glad you're here today. <coughs> I got a frog. <clears throat> Try that again. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I was called a stranger this morning, and rightfully so. We've been away for two weeks at uh, the, the non-snow version of Arctic Blast uh, a couple weeks ago, and, and weekend to remember last week. So um, it's, it's been hard not to be here for two Sundays, but uh, it's always good to come back and be with the church family. So we're glad to be back. Um, just one thing I want to share with you uh, as, as far as um, worship, just, just a picture of worship. As we, as we begin the worship portion of the service today, uh, in, in part of my devotions, I was looking at Revelation in, in chapter 5, starting at verse 11. I just want to give you a picture of this, just, to, just so that we can remember what we're doing here today and who it is that we're worshiping. It says in verse 11, it says, Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, and living creatures, and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, to receive power, and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven, and on the earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, I heard saying, Blessing, and honor, and glory, and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. 
It's all about Him. And that's what we're here to do this morning is worship Him. So I hope you join me this morning as we worship. We're going to get you warmed up with the old church choir song this morning. So let's worship. There's revival and it's spreading like a wildfire in my heart. Sunday morning, hallelujah, and it's lasting all week long. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? It's the rhythm of a gospel song. Once you choose it, hope you're feeling joy this morning, and I hope also that you have the evidence of, of God's living in your life this morning. All throughout my history, faithfulness has walked beside me. The winter storms make way for spring. In every season, from where I'm standing, I see the evidence of your goodness. 
your spirit into this place, into our hearts, Lord. Father, that you are who you say you are. You are the king of kings. But Father, we need to make sure that you are the king in our hearts as well. That your kingdom expands into our, our homes and into our lives, into our hearts. So Father, I just pray this morning that your spirit quickens us this morning. That those that have ears to hear and eyes to see, Father, that they, they may recognize you as that king if they've never done that before. Father, we just ask your blessing upon this service. May everything done here only glorify you alone, Father, because it's all about you. We ask your anointing upon the pastor this morning as you, he brings the message, message of hope, message of, of just love that he's, that's been given to him from, from you above, Father. Father, we just thank you. We just ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We got one more song to sing. Victory in Jesus. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning And his precious love's atoning Then I repented of my sin Let Scottsdale hear us. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory. Beneath the cleansing flood, I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again, and caused the blind to see, and then I cried, dear Jesus, come and play the broken spirit. Somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Sing about his victory. Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and brought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me. Plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing. Some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Let's sing it now. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him. And all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Turn around and greet someone this morning in the name of the Lord. Good morning.
No, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> well, good morning, Senator Bethel. It's nice to know that we have a victory in Jesus Christ. Amen. That he's the Savior, he's the Messiah, he's the God, he's the true living God of the world. He stands upon truth and understanding. And we stand upon that truth, we stand upon that rock in everything we do and everything that we say. Praise God. Hey, as a way of announcements and that, um, all for God, Susie? <laughs> Meeting today at 3 o'clock in the Fellowship of Paul. Okay, all for God this afternoon at 3 o'clock. Okay. Uh, Navigators are going to meet after the service here um, this afternoon, so um, keep them in your prayers as they push along in that, okay, with that. Uh, Walk in the Spirit, you know, occurs every Thursday night um, at 6 p.m. You can watch it live or you can watch it later on, okay, so keep that in your prayer. Women's Prayer Breakfast is next month. Spring fling. Wow, that sounds really fancy, doesn't it? Huh? Uh, I think it's another name for Easter egg hunt. But spring fling. Okay, happens at the, uh, the 20, 23rd of March. And how do I know that, that, that date? Because if you look at those signs down there, that word March and 23rd was put on letter by letter and number by number the other day. That's why I remember that date, so March 23rd. Hey, if you'd like to take a sign... Take a sign and put it out somewhere, but it's March 23rd, okay, spring fling, okay? Are there any more announcements? No more announcements. Anyone? Okay, time is sharing. Um, we would ask that you would keep Merle in your prayers as he's still healing yet. Um, keep him updated on that, Lisa, any? He's good. Okay. So continue to pray for Merle, okay? Um, continue to pray for, for Marvin and Tom and them as they do treatments. Um, there was someone else. Anyone have a prayer request? <laughs> yes, that's who it was, Ron. <laughs> Ron had knee replacement the other day. Um, keep Trish in your prayers, a shoulder surgery. I was over to see Ron the other day, and Ron said, God bless Mark Strone's heart. He did two knees at once. He said, I don't want to do two knees at once. One's bad enough. So, yeah, so, yeah, good. She's home. She's home. Yeah, she's home. Yeah, she come home. Eight o'clock this morning. She's home. That's a praise. That's a praise. <laughs> good, Jamie. Okay, Larry has a biopsy on Thursday, so keep Larry in your prayers. Lisa. Okay. Okay, good, good. Others? Okay. Okay, Sherry had surgery the past week, so keep her in her prayers. Any other unspoken requests? Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, so keep Brian's brother in space back in the hospital. Yeah, and Shannon? Amen. That, that's a good praise, isn't it? That's a real good praise, yeah. It's, all, it's him. It's not us. It's him. Others this morning? Hey, we have two. Um, I told you a, a few months ago about a, a, a lady named Kathy who had back surgery. And she put a, they put a rod in her back. Um, it's a titanium rod, but for some reason, the bar is bending in the bottom. And it's bent quite a bit. Well, titanium doesn't bend, you know. But somehow, there's something going on in her body. The bar is ten bending, and they're not exactly sure what to do about it. The ultimate case would be to take that out and put another bar in. 
which they don't want to do. But she's had a long road so far, and she's got a long way to go. So we'd ask you to keep her in your prayers. Um, we talked to her husband the other day. Uh, keep him in your prayers. And the other day, we were at Walmart, believe it or not, and um, it, Sue struck a conversation up with this lady, and this lady um, was telling her that more likely her daughter's going to go to jail. And um, she started crying and that. And Sue had an opportunity to minister her um, that day. So um, just keep that situation in, in your prayers. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty good that she's going to end up in jail, prison somewhere. Okay, so, and she's a teenager. Okay, so just keep that in your prayers too. Others this morning? Yeah, camp was um, winter. Um, Ari Blast, the second part of Ari Blast was this weekend, and they're coming home this afternoon. So pray that they have a safe trip home. Okay. Yeah. Marvin. Is that good or bad? <laughs> yeah, you're probably, you, she's probably. Never mind. <laughs> okay, all right. Others this morning? Becky. Okay, two interviews the boys have had. Keep them in your prayers. Bonnie. Yep, Betty Ann's back there. Good morning, Betty Ann. Everybody turn around and say hi to Betty Ann this morning. It's been a long time since she's been here, and she's doing well. We visit her the other day. She's doing very well. So welcome this morning. Others? Hey, we're going to sing through it all. Father, we just thank you for this day. We just thank you that we're on this journey through the Lenten season. And Father, as we go through this journey, let us be able to reflect upon our lives. Let us be able to take the Word of God and open it each and every day and read how, how you just met people's needs and how you looked after them and how you provide salvation for us, dear Lord. But, Father, look after us, bless us, and be with us. Father, through this whole journey of Lenten season, Father, let us be able to learn more about you, something about you, more about you. But let us also learn something about ourselves, dear Lord. Father, we thank you for that. And, Father, as we come before you this morning, and as we humble our hearts before you, we just ask that you would consider and look at and embrace each one of these requests that were mentioned this morning. And, Father, we thank you for that. Father, we lift uh, Merle before you, and we ask your blessings upon him. And, Father, let the healing power of Christ come across him, dear Lord. And, Father, let that back start to mend, where he get the mobility of the, of the back and the legs. We pray for Ron. We pray for Trish, dear Lord, that for a shoulder and for a knee replacement that took place the other day, look after them and be with them in a very special way. Father, let them feel your presence this morning. Let them feel the, the presence of, of Christ, dear Lord, to enter the room and just touch them upon their shoulders. We pray for Larry. He's going to have a biopsy this week. Look after him, bless him, and be with him and touch him in a very special way. Father, guide the, the physician's eyes and their, their hands, dear Lord, to do a biopsy. Father, pray for Donnie Ray, dear Lord, and Father, we just ask, we just lift him before you, and we ask your blessings upon him, dear Lord. Look after him and be with him. We thank you, and we ask your blessings upon job interviews, that these interviews went well, dear Lord, that the boys can find employment, dear Lord. Look after them and be with them. 
We thank you for the surgery that Lisa went through, dear Lord and Father. We just praise your name for that. We pray for Sherry. You had um, surgery last week, dear Lord, and we, we just lift her before you, and we pray that, um, again, the healing power of Christ would come across her, look after her, be with her, and bless her, dear Lord. Father, we thank you for safety. As Shannon said, that God was guiding the vehicle, dear Lord. And, Father, we're so grateful and thankful for that. And, Father, you look after us each and every day that way. And sometimes it just, it just marvels us how you look after us. And, Father, we praise your name for that, for the guidance and direction. We pray for Brian's brother who's back in the hospital, dear Lord. Look after him and be with him. Father, we pray for this young lady who... Um, a good chance, a real good chance she'll be going to prison. Father, I ask you to give her mother a calmness and just comfort her broken heart, dear Lord. But Father, be with this young lady, dear Lord. Look after her and be with her. And Father, I, I pray that they both find you as their Savior. That Father, you'll speak through the, through the Holy Spirit to their hearts, dear Lord that your comfort can get us through anything within this world from the smallest tragedy to the largest tragedy, dear Lord. Father, look after them and be with them in a very special way. Father, pray for Kathy who has a rod in her back and the rod is bending in the bottom, dear Lord. Father, the doctors can't understand what exactly is going on. She's at the, a different doctor each and every day, dear Lord, and test and just all the other things she's gone through. Father, be with her and be with her husband, dear Lord. Father, this morning, I pray that you enter her room, dear Lord, and they can feel the touch of the Master's hand upon their life, Father. Bless them and be with them and touch them. Father, we thank you that Betty's with us this morning, dear Lord, and Father, we praise your name for that, and we're so grateful for that. Father, we pray for our shut-ins this morning, dear Lord. Look after each and every one of them, no matter where they're at. They'd like to be here, but just bless them and be with them. We thank you for the progress that Shirley's made, dear Lord, with the series of shots, dear Lord. And Father, we praise your name about that. Father, we thank you for who you are. And Father, we take our side and request, the ones that are down in our heart, and Father, right now, we just lift them before you. Father, we thank you that you brought Denise home safe, dear Lord, and Sean home safe, dear Lord, and, and Father, just look after them. They get the rest they need after traveling quite a while. And Father, we thank you for the safety you've given them. Father, we thank you just for who you are and the things that you do within our life. We ask your blessings upon our nation, dear Lord. Father, we pray for that nation each and every Sunday, each and every day. And Father, we ask in your precious name, dear Lord, that you could touch this nation. Maybe in a way it has been touched in a long time. Be with the state of Israel and just everything that's taking place in the Mideast, dear Lord. There could be a conclusion to that. Father, we pray for Dina who's going to have surgery in the next week or so, dear Lord. Father, look after her and be with her. Strengthen and encourage her. Father, take any fears, any anxiety out of her body, dear Lord, and replace it with your love and your compassion and your understanding. We pray for our kids, dear Lord, and Father, we thank you. We pray for the offering this morning that it's used to, to build the kingdom up within the world. We pray for the, the givers this morning, dear Lord, that we give graciously back to you for how you provided for us. Father, we pray this morning if there's one here or one watching who doesn't know you as a personal Savior, the far the doors of the hearts would open up and the Holy Spirit would start stirring and they may accept you. Now, Father, be with us as the rest of the service continues. Father, we thank you for that. And Father, Father, pray for Sharon, dear Lord, who's not feeling well today. Look after her as she pops into my mind. Look after her and be with her and bless her, dear Lord. Father, we thank you for that. And we ask everything in your name. Amen. Good morning. How you doing? Yeah. Oh, I shook him down here, huh? Here it comes. Here it comes. Thank you. Well, how did your week go? 
Good. How'd school go? Good. Good. Did you have fun this week? Did you make all A's this week? Uh, yes. Got a couple yeses. Yes, yes, yes. All right, well, that's good. That's good. You can talk about that after. You can tell them what a grammar test after. It's something we all love to do in school, right? Yeah, they all said yeah, yeah. Well, Landon has brought something for me today. Ooh, cool. I like it. What is this? Can I take him out of the bag? Okay, I didn't know if I was allowed to touch him or not. Some people are very very picky about their cards okay they're baseball cards there they are wow are these rookies oh you don't know okay all right maybe I asked your sisters are these rookies you don't know <laughs> well you know what happens is so you're a baseball player you're a football player you're some kind of player basketball player these are top cards. These are good cards. No, oh, they are good cards. Believe me, they're good cards, though they are. You and I will talk about that, okay? Okay. You have a card then? No, because I don't really play baseball, but... No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You said you play baseball. You I don't right now because it's winter. Oh, okay. I'll take that as an excuse, okay? Wake up. <laughs> See, okay, listen. Here we go. Landon went to a lot of trouble putting these in the bag to bring them. So you better listen. All right. So all these cards have a picture of a player on. Okay, so you get to see who they are. They have their name, what team they, they play for. Okay, but that's nice, isn't it, to get your picture on a card. But on the back is their statistics. Now, how many, how many runs they made? How many outs they made? If he's, a, if, he's, if he's a pitcher, how many strikes he threw during the year? But all the statistics are on the back. Well, you know, the Bible has statistics. Do you know that? Yeah. The Bible has statistics in it about what Jesus can do. You know, he fed the 5,000. That's a statistic, Right? He fed 4,000. That's a statistic, right? All right. They wandered in the desert for 40 years. That's a statistic, isn't it? Okay. There's all kinds of statistics in the Bible. So there is. But instead of putting them on the back of the card, you know what we do? We put them in our hearts. We put all those statistics and everything about in the Word of God in our hearts. So we do. So this is good information. But the Bible is even better information, has better statistics than this. Because this card won't do anything for you. Okay, it's nice to have. Really nice to have. Okay, but it won't do anything for you. But the Bible will, because the, the Bible can change your life. Okay, so when you read the Bible, just think about statistics from the Bible. And as you read the Bible, think, find, see if you can find some. Okay? All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for the things that you do within our lives, dear Lord. Father, bless these kids, dear Lord. Father, just we put them into your hands. We ask that you mold them and shape them. But, Father, we ask that you protect them and be with them spiritually, physically, and mentally, dear Lord. Father, enrich their lives in a very special way. Father, be with their parents, their grandparents, dear Lord. Father, we thank you for who they are. And, Father, we ask everything in your name. Amen and amen. Okay. There's that. Who wants the bag? Who hasn't had it in a while? You haven't had it, have you? Huh? What? Okay, this is the deal. You get it next week after she. Yeah. Where's Pastor Jason at? <laughs> okay. Here you go. You can get a lollipop, and you can go. All right?
Okay. Did you wake up? Let me tell you a little story. We had some visitors at the church the other day. The visitors have four legs. The visitors were in the popsicles and the lollipops. They're not now. They're new ones. Don't get excited, parents. They're new ones. They're new ones. Okay, they're new ones. But Debbie came out to clean. They're all over the floor. So they were. The mice were in there. And I figured they just had a party. But what I figured also, when those little mice go home to their parents, they're going to be sugared up. You know, so the parents deserve not teaching their children to get in the lollipops. You know, so now we've got a lid on them. Okay, but I just want to make sure you know they're new ones. Okay, they're new ones, so they are. Hey, this morning we're going to, we're going to look and see what, what Jesus said about the church. Okay, now, when, when you get to that, we're, we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 16. And we're just going to read Matthew chapter 16, and also we're going to read um, Matthew 18. Okay, so if you can watch it in the monitors, you can look, take your Bibles and turn to it. And we're going to just look at a couple other ones, too. But let, let's begin there, okay? In Matthew chapter 16, then we'll talk about some stuff here, okay? Matthew 16. Matthew chapter 16, starting at verse 13. Now, some of these verses we have, we have read already. We've, we've kind of looked at them, but we have to reread them for what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about church. Now, there's something you're going to find out about this message. It's a little different, okay? And I'll tell you why after we read the Scriptures, okay? Okay, in Matthew chapter 16, starting at verse 13. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he was asking the disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said to him, some say John the Baptist, others said Elijah, but still others, Jeremiah, or, it says, one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say I am? Now, remember Remember when we looked at this the first time? Jesus was talking to disciples, and Jesus asked the question, okay, who they say I am? Well, you know, they say this, this, this. And I said, no, 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 no. He says, no, no, no. He says, who do you say? You, you, who do you say I am? Okay, so that's where we're at. In verse 16, Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barlow, because because blood, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock, there it is, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will, Hades will, not, will not overpower it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosened to you in heaven. Excuse me. Then he warned his disciples that they should tell no one that he was the Christ. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised up on the third day. Peter, now you know who Peter is. He's the little guy that engaged his mouth before he kind of thought about it. Now, you never do that. I know that. Okay. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are not setting your mind on God's interest, but on man's interest. Now, go to, go to the 18th chapter. Okay, We're going to start at verse 15. Okay, down to 20, verse 15. You there? If your brother sins, go and show him his faults in private. If he listens to you, you will warn <coughs> you have won your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two, two more with you, so that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every fact may be confirmed. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen, even to the church, let him, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector, which was bad in Jesus' time. Okay? 
18, truly I say to you, whatever, here we go again, whatever you, you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosened in heaven. And again I say to you, that if two of you agree on earth about anything that they may ask, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. For those, for there, for where two or three have gathered together in my name, I am there in your midst. Now let me, let me share something off, uh, a side note about what, what I just read. Um, in, in that 15th verse, down to the 20th verse, I say, that's church discipline. Okay? That's church discipline. Now I just, I just wanted, I didn't state that in the first service, but I just want to tell you, that's what church discipline looks like. Okay? Now, I'll say this too, which I'll get in trouble for. Um, church discipline is something the church has lost. Um, I've seen it on a bigger scale than just one church. Okay? Um, so I just, I just want to tell you that that's church discipline. Now, you can throw your tomatoes in that at me, okay, and discipline me, okay? But I just, I just wanted to tell you that. But we're going to talk about the church, and you're, you're going to say, really, as you go through this, you're going to say, well, you didn't say nothing about the church. Yeah, Jesus spoke of the church, about the church. Jesus spoke about the character of the church. He spoke about what the church is supposed to look like what the church is to do. Okay, now let me share some more facts with you, okay? More than 100 times, now listen, I want you to hear all this, okay? More than 100 times in here, okay, in the Gospels, Jesus is reported to using the term kingdom, kingdom of God, or kingdom of heaven. Okay, did you hear that? Okay, that's 100 times, okay? Only on two occasions is reported of using the word church. Hear what I said? 100 times of the kingdom of God, okay? Only two, the church. And we see that in Matthew, the 16th, okay? And we see that in Matthew, the 18th chapter, only two, Okay? Now, you're going to say, well, if it's only said two times, how are you going to talk about the church? Well, that's what I thought about when I started this process. Okay? But Jesus, if you read the scriptures, Jesus talked about a lot about the church in general. To con you know, you, you can take that two times in the Gospels. You conclude from, from this fact, however, that the church was a was a minor importance in Jesus' thinking, but it's not to be ignored. Okay? Because I'll say that. I say that because this. Because Jesus talked about the kingdom. See, we're all part of the kingdom of God as a believer. Okay? It, <laughs> I have to state that very good because <clears throat> someone will call me out on it, Okay? If you're if you're if you're if you've accepted Jesus in your heart, you're part of the kingdom of God. Okay, so Jesus in his talking to his disciples, and in the, in, in the people, he always talked about the kingdom. Now, Jesus did something. Jesus promised something. Jesus had promised that the Holy Spirit, and we looked at this a couple weeks ago, the Holy Spirit. What he said about, but Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit would guide the disciples into all truths. Hear what I said? That the Holy Spirit will guide into all truths in every way. Okay? The added light thrown on the nature and the purpose of the church is in Acts, okay, in the epistles. Okay, did you hear that? The Acts and the epistles. It's doubtless a fulfillment of Jesus' promise. And the, 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 whole, the whole purpose of this little message which I really have you confused right now about, however, is to confirm what Jesus said about his church. That's the whole purpose. Okay, because he did say a lot without using the word church. Okay? So here we go. We're just going to look at a few things, okay? And we're going to start here. The principles and the teaching about the kingdom of God are valid 
for his church. You know what I said? They're valid for the church, the church of today. Even though this word is, is over 2,000 years old, the principles that Jesus talked about in this word, they are valid for the church of today. What Jesus taught about salvation as a gift from God revealed, received, <clears throat> a gift of God, reveals on the basis of two things. First, repentance and faith. Okay? Repentance and faith. It is evidence. They're valid principles. Okay? Look, Christ would not establish a church where salvation could, where salvation could be attained by some other means. He would not establish it. Okay? He would not establish a church where salvation can be attained by some other means. Jesus taught that the kingdom of God is a democracy of equals. No one is greater, greater within the world than each other in the church. You hear what I said? We're all on the same plane. Wow. We're all on the same plane. Okay? I don't care if you're, 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 you're a preacher. I don't care if you're a missionary. I don't care if you're head of a denomination. I don't care if you're just... Uh, I'll say it this way. Don't take it the wrong pew sitter. Don't take it the wrong way. Okay. Um, we're all on equal in the same plane. Okay. Plato had a, Plato had a great, um, and I hope I can remember it. If not, Jason will probably correct me. Um, he probably knows about this. Yeah. Plato had a saying that one foot in the world and one foot not in the world. It doesn't work that way. But he said, basically, in so many words, we're all in the same plane. Okay, we're all in the same plane. Now, you can correct me if I'm wrong. It'll work. He don't know. I, I, I didn't know that either. Okay. <laughs> but it, it, it's, it's, it's a democracy of equal. No one is greater than the other one. Greatness in his kingdom will be on the basis of faithful service. Now, let's turn to Mark, Mark chapter 10. Okay, let me show you that for a minute, okay? Mark chapter 10. In Mark chapter 10, Mark chapter 10 starting at the verse um, 36 to 45, I think it is. Now, when we're going to start, I'm going to start right in the middle, right in the middle of this pericope, okay? And this whole thing talks about Jesus' suffering is foretold, okay? Now, we're going to start at verse 30, 36, and it's right in the middle. He said to them, what do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Grant that we may sit one on your right and one on your left. Okay, in your glory. In verse 38. But Jesus said to them, You do not, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? Or to be baptized with a baptism which I have which with which I am baptized? They said to him, we are able. And Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, the cup that I drink, you shall drink. And you shall be baptized with the baptism with which I am bapt I'm baptized. But, he says, in that verse 40, he says, but, to sit on my right or on my left, this is not mine to give but it is for those whom it, is, it has been prepared. Hearing this, the ten began to feel what? Inadequate, really. Indignant or inadequate, whatever, whatever version you're using, okay, in, in every way, okay? Um, where was I? Someone remind me where I was. Huh? 31? 41? Oh, I'm in the wrong column. Okay. But to sit on my right, my <laughs> but to sit on, on my right or my left, this is not mine to give, but it's for those whom it has been prepared. Okay. Having this at 10, feeling indignant with James, with James and John, calling them to himself. Jesus said to them, listen now, Jesus said to them, you know that those who are recognized as rulers of the Gentile lords is over them. And their greater men exercise authority over them. But it's not this way among you. But whoever wishes to be, to be, 
to become greater among you shall be your servants, and he who wishes to be first among you shall be a slave of all. Listen to what he says about himself. It says, Even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. That little word, ransom for many, each book of the Bible has a theme. In Mark, the, the theme for, for Mark is ransom for many. Okay, that's just a side note, okay? All right? But it's equal. Who's the greatest? Surely Jesus would not establish a church with a hierarchy, with aristocrats' principles that were all in the same plane. He taught that a Christian had obligations to God and obligations to the state. He even says this in RSV. He says, Render therefore to Caesar all the things that are Caesar's and to God all the things that are God. The implication is that when, when the civil authority and the religious representatives remain in the proper sphere, a person, a person can be a great Christian and a good citizen without compromise or, or conflict. Surely our Lord would not want his church to be dominant that this, over the state or the state over the church. The church is separate. The church stands upon the truth, the understanding that Christ is the Lord. Amen? Amen. Jesus clearly taught that, Jesus clearly taught that it is not his disciples' right or responsibility to destroy heresy by force. Now, take that and absorb that a little bit, okay? Jesus intends to conquer, conquer, but his weapon is this. His weapon is love, and his weapon is truth within the world. He has not established a church to conquer by force, my friends. Jesus is Lord. His lordship is, un, is undelegated. He would not and has not established a church to which he delegates authority to forgive sins or grant or withhold salvation. For I cannot give you salvation. You cannot give me salvation. Who is the only person that can give us salvation? Jesus. Jesus is the only one. Everything that Jesus taught in, the, taught in, his, in his parables and the Sermon on the Mount and elsewhere will be consistent with what he teaches about the church. Every promise or command that applies to a disciple as individuals is a valid command. The church is to help each other within the world to do better cooperatively than we can do by ourselves. Now, you still with me? <laughs> okay, one of you are anyway. Jesus teaches about the church in the scriptures. Okay? It was important that the disciples came to believe, believe on Jesus as the Messiah and Lord. Very important. Okay, it was very important. And we can see that in Matthew 16, verses um, 13 to 23. It didn't answer to Jesus a direct question. But who do you say I am? Peter says, well, you know. He says, some say you're Elijah. He said, I heard a guy the other day said, you might be Jeremiah. I heard this woman on the street down here, a little ways down here, and she said, you could be a prophet. And Jesus says, no. Come on, guys. Who do you say I am? He says, you are the son of God, the son of man. Jesus was off was obvious pleased with Peter's response. Jesus was acting like the rock, living up to his name, Peter the rock, which Jesus had given him. Peter was no more Peter was was no more active as a rock. In a few minutes, he was going to challenge Jesus. Peter tried to dismiss Jesus, he tried to hold back Jesus from going to the cross. We see that in that 16th chapter. And he says, no. 
And Jesus comes out after, after Peter said, you, you are the, the Son of God, you are the Son of Man, whatever version you have. And, 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 Jesus, and Jesus says, you're right, Peter, you, you're the rock, you know? And he said, well, and Peter said, I'm not going to let you go to the cross. And Jesus probably looks into Peter's heart and Peter's eye and said, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me. He was acting like Satan. He was acting like him. But he says, Peter, I'm going to build my church on the rock. Build my church on you. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. Amen? Amen. My friends, the word, the words translated church is a Greek word that means call out, assemble, or a congregation. In the secular Greek, it is used for the, the calling out of a citizen of a city to, to do business. In the Septuagint, it is used for a congregation of Israel assembled before the tabernacle. Christ's church or assembly or congregation is composed of all who, all who have come into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Jesus had already begun to build his church on the foundation, such as Peter, Andrew, James, Matthew. All of them, he began to. And other apostles who believed in him. He continues to build the church in today's world for those people who have Christ as their Savior. The church, of, the church of Jesus Christ is composed of all who have been redeemed and repented by the blood of Jesus Christ. There was no power. There was no more death. There was no more pain. Death has no power over, over Christ's church. Every member has eternal life. The gates of hell will not prevail. Why? Because Christ said it. The power of death, the power of death should not prevail against it in any way. Jesus used the word church two times as local congregation of believers. He was, he, this is the usage, usage usually found in the scriptures. He's giving a, 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 practical, a practical advice about how to deal with a brother even in that one thing. You know, go with him. If you don't confess, go by two. You know, don't confess, go to church and that church discipline. He's telling them how to do it. My friends, the church is made up of sick people. Sick with what? with sin in their life. Someone once said the church is a hospital where the injured, the poor, come to be healed. The church has an eternal purpose. Let me share this with you. You and I are stewards of this gospel. Understand that, don't you? We are stewards of the gospel. The word Jesus spoke to Peter in Matthew 16, 9. He also spoke to the church in Matthew 18, 8, 18, 18. He says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whoever binds on earth shall bind in heaven. The keys. The steward carries the keys to the building. And my friends, you are the building of God. You have the key. The key is where? Right there. The key is right here in every way. The keys to the kingdom of heaven are two things. First, repentance. Secondly, faith. The church, all believers, has been entrusted with the gospel and eternal consequences. What people do on earth has eternal results. The responsibility for the gospel is not, is not confined to Peter, the apostles, to me. It is the responsibility of the whole church to take the gospel of Jesus Christ into the world. You and I are to be making disciples within the world. We are to present the gospel of Jesus Christ to people. And until the church learns to make disciples, the church is not going anywhere. 
It will stall. Jesus clearly taught that people must respond to the gospel for themselves. I can't save you. You can't save me. The only one that can save us is who? Jesus. It's a, it's a, it would be a fatal error to push, to push and to pull the figure of the keys to mean that the church can save apart from a personal faith in Christ. My friends, you are a trustee, and you are a trustee of salvation. There's only two things in eternity. One spends eternity in heaven. The other one spends eternity in hell. If you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you'll spend eternity in heaven. If you don't, you know the consequences. As they go to their instruments, I can remember... um, before I went to ministry, I worked in the strip mines, and I dug, I ran a drag line, I ran um, strip coal and that, and the, the joke always was in the strip mines that, yeah, someday I'll be down there shoveling coal in hell, in the furnace. That's the way people look at it. And people laugh it off. But to be honest, Salvation is no laughing matter. Because someday we will all stand before God. And all of us will, the whole world, and we'll all give an account of what we did. So Jesus talked about the church, but he talked about the church, and I'll say it this way, you can argue with me, I'll just say for, for conversation, a roundabout way that encompasses everything. That's what I mean by roundabout, it encompasses everything. So the question is, the question has to be, are you standing on the promises of God? Do you know who he is? You have that relationship with him this morning? I don't know anyone's heart here. I know mine, but I don't know yours. I don't know any of your hearts. I hope you can say you do as we continue through this series and look at several different things. Now, we'll say this was on, this is the hardest one that I've done. Because if Jesus would have said, okay, Senator Bethel, this is what you're going to do. If he wrote that there, that would be a lot easier. It's like the call that, that God puts on our lives. If he, I always said if he would call and say by Verizon, hey, you're supposed to go over here. Boy, that's a lot easier than waiting six years or seven years to find out where you're supposed to be gone and having all the trouble. I want you to do this and that. But he didn't say that. He, give us, he gives us all the components of what the disciple, what the church is supposed to do, what the church is supposed to look like. Now, it's up to us to follow through with those components, what he wants us to do and how he wants us to say it and when he wants us to do it. So this morning, if you stand with me, we're going to sing, Standing on the Promises of God. No, one and four. One and four. Okay? You practice one and four this morning? Okay, all right. Okay. Now sing it now like you mean it, okay? Standing on the promises of Christ my King. Through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises, I cannot fall. Listening every moment to the Spirit call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all. Now sing it. 
standing 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 on the promises of god my savior standing i'm standing on the promises of god and all god's people said amen hey just sit down just for a moment okay we like to give you the results of our our election election i guess it was election huh the yeses were one and the noes were one <laughs> no it was unanimous 67 people voted and 67 voted yes for for pastor jason to come yeah give him a hand give him a hand and um there was no nose. There was no nose. Well, maybe mine. They didn't count mine. They didn't count mine. But Jason said this morning, you know, if they all vote no, you have to stay. And, you know, you know, I said no. Um, but congratulations. Um, I'll have to say this, and I got a long speech for you that might get done with everything um, in, the, in the April. But um, it's a privilege to know that this congregation is going to be in good hands. It really is. And it's comforting to me to know that you, God has given you some great abilities in order to do this. So um, I praise God for that. And it's a privilege to work with you each and every day, so it is. Do we have a motion to close this congregational meeting? Lisa and Ed? Okay. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for everything that you do within our lives, dear Lord. Father, we just ask uh, your blessings upon uh, Pastor Jason and Susie and the kids, dear Lord, as they, in the near future, look for this, this endeavor, dear Lord. Strengthen them, encourage them, bless them, and be with them. And Father, as we leave this place, as we go into the world, strengthen us and encourage us. Let us to be able to take a stand for what we believe in, stand on the truth. Father, we thank you for that. And Father, we ask everything in your name. Amen. You're dismissed.